This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. You are your greatest asset. It's time you started investing in that. Visit BetterHelp.com forward slash Double Toasted and take care of you. And I love that. I love that there's this family's dancing around. And as you say, it's so lush and musical. Meanwhile, this man's hiding in an attic somewhere. Right. <laughs> Ostracized. I mean, I, he and John Leguizamo was really good. He was really good. He's not doing. He's not doing that rat or that no. that thing from Ice Age or anything like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. Sid the sloth. Sid the sloth. He's not doing anything like that. He's pretty much doing like a low key voice for this character. Mm -hmm. And Bruno, I thought was a great character. He man, was a great this. character. Just got back from Chicago, but we got more shows coming up, so you can catch us in Miami. And then the next day in Orlando, that's going to be January 20th and January 21st. And then you can see us in Dallas, Texas, February 18th. Go to x1entertainment.com to get your tickets. But if you go below, you can get tickets for these remaining shows over here. I don't know. This might be history in the making this movie that we see. Uh, not too many Disney animated movies about Columbia. I know that Disney was working on, I heard they're working on a, a uh, family animated film about uh, Pablo Escobar at one time. But, <laughs> 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 Narco teens. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, that got dropped. I think Pixar is going to pick it up, though. Okay. You know, they, they don't mind doing some daring different things out there. <laughs> but, hey, now we're here, though. Now we got Encanto. Mm -hmm. And Encanto, that is about the... I'll tell you a little bit about this. That's about the, the Madrigal family. That's right. The Magical Madrigals. The Magical Magical. Name Magical. The Magical Madrigals. They live in a magical town. And all that magic is coming from the Madrigal House. They got enough magic for a whole town. Started, and you saw her a little while ago over here. There she is. There she is. She's not so young right here, but back in the day, young Abuela Alma, who's voiced by Maria Cecilia Botero, uh, back when she was a like when she's young, fine thing. Mm -hmm. Hey, but watch out though. She was married. Actually, not too long though. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Over in her village, some attackers came through, forced these people from their homes, and they were forced out into the woods. Unfortunately, Alma, she lost her husband. She lost her love. And she, she looked up in the sky and said, Damn, you know, give me a break. If you if you are up there, just to hell with me. Just protect my babies. Right, right. <laughs> and somehow she whipped a candle out of her ass. <laughs> out of nowhere, a magical candle. Grew. Out of nowhere, a magical candle. And, I think and, it, and grew a whole village. <laughs> hey, we're talking mm. about magic. She probably did pull it from my ass. But mm. a magical candle. She was like, what am I sitting on? Oh, uh, what candle? <laughs> magical candle that stays, that doesn't stop. It stays lit. You know, I guess the perpetual lit candle right here it stays lit up and it has a lot of magic, enough magic to surround her home and this town with hills. And also what this candle does, now this is where it gets real badass, this candle, they say, you know, just in case, just in case the magic doesn't work with the hills and everything like that, keeping people out. Well, then we, this, this candle said, I will give you all powers. I will give you all specific powers so that you can protect yourselves and future generations coming up. You, and also, you will be the new Eternals. Yes. Or X Men or wh whatever one you chose. And candle smells good too. <laughs> <laughs> that candle is so good that, like I said, it gave them a home where it gave them all their powers. Except for, oh, and there she is. There's, I told y'all she was fine. There she is right there. That's Abuela when she was younger with her, with her three babies. So generations upon generations, they come into this house and they go to a room and they get their powers. Everybody steps in, walk in, get a power, walk out. Cool. Except you, Bianca. Uh, Maribel. I was, I'm sorry, Maribel. Yeah. Maribel. <laughs> ain't, ain't, ain't shit for you in here. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, you got those glasses. I don't yeah, know. I don't know you about coming you. Coming in here with that. Your nerd ass. <laughs> you, ain't nothing for you in this house. You can use a toilet or uh, get yourself some water or something, but ain't no magic in here for you. Which is sad because, I mean, what do you do? What do you do when you're living in a home full of magical people? You got a, 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 a magically powered family, and you're the only one. Your, your powerless ass ain't got nothing. This magical house is falling apart, but nobody wants to listen to you. Because, again, who's going to believe your little powerless ass? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you know we just keep you around to be nice, right? Yeah. 
We just keep you around because you family. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, your ordinary ass be out in the street like everybody yeah, else. Like everybody else. Yeah. Coming to worship us. Yeah, exactly. Or is there a magic inside that just no one sees? Let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer for Encanto. Like Senorita Perfecta Isabella. But mama, why am I the only one that didn't get a gift? You're just as special as you suck. That's what I did. <laughs> The house don't like you, neither do we. <laughs> Get a job. <laughs> There's light where you least expect it. I'm gonna get into this review. But you know what the deal is, y'all, before we do. I gotta thank somebody for sponsoring this portion of the show and for sponsoring this review. And that is Razor. Razor, the makers of the new Razor Blade 15. You know. Oh, okay. We just talked about a razor. <laughs> yeah. A razor for a different thing, <laughs> yeah. right? A different place. You know, uh, looking at poor Maribel over here, she ain't got no powers. Maybe she's good at video games. Maybe that's her power. <laughs> you know, and maybe she, uh, maybe she gets this uh, Razor Blade 15 right here. She can be the envy of the family. And the Razor Blade 15 is packed with the latest and greatest Intel and NVIDIA have to offer. The Razor Blade 15 Advanced provides high-performance gaming on the go. I mean, you can take that power with you everywhere, Martin. Mm -hmm. You know, I, That's why, I, look, I've been playing on consoles and laptops for a while. And people saying, man, oh, you one of those. <laughs> oh, you one of those inferior people playing oh, on you. You can't get a desktop like everybody else? Playing on your laptop. <laughs> Oh, what is wrong with you, Mr. <laughs> Coleman? Well, now I can take that power anywhere I want to go. If Thanksgiving is coming up, I might take something to Waco to play. Mm. Yeah, I might get one of these to travel with now that we're doing all these shows. Sure. All Razor Blade 15 models are equipped with beautifully calibrated displays, including a full HD panel with at least, I'm sorry, with a fast 360 hertz refresh rate, Martin. Nice. Yes, I like Mark. that. You don't know what it means, but you know it's nice. Well, I know it means that when you play, you're not going to have a big lag. Like yes. you might on a lot of other laptops. Everyone knows a gamer that might appreciate something like this. Or you might want it yourself. Start your shopping early right here. And save over $1,000 on select models of the Razor Blade 15 Advanced Ooh. by going to, and I'm going to show you so you can spell it. There it is, Razor.com. A lot of people, they're trying to spell it like the thing you shave your face with. No. Hey, you're welcome to try if you want to. You know? <laughs> I want to thank Razor for sponsoring this portion of the video. And I want to thank all of you out there. You know why. Because you support. And I appreciate that. All right. Oh, Martin. Oh, let me tell you about my experience with this movie. Oh, please. Because I, I did not see. Now, we're talking about Encanto right here. I never saw the trailer for this. Oh, okay. I didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know anything about this movie I, I didn't, here, man. I didn't either. I, mean, uh, I didn't. Went, oh. I didn't. And the thing is, I didn't even try to look at it. I just, it flew under the radar with me, and I just decided, you know, I'm just gonna go to the theater to watch this. So I went in not knowing what this was about. So when things start happening, it was a little odd mm. for me mm -hmm. what was going on here. Uh, at first, I thought this was gonna be a big message movie about the plight of refugees. You know, because start yeah. out with these people running from the village and whatnot. I'm like, all right, you got Lynn Manuel Miranda, his name's on here. And I was like, okay, all right, we're making a, you know, yeah, yeah. a political movie right here. Way to go, Disney. I thought y'all were scared, but apparently not. Yeah. That did not last long. That did not last long. Those people ran from there, oppressors settled in this town, and the shit got weird after that. And I didn't know <laughs> what the <laughs> was going on. These Colombians start getting powers, super strength, controlling the weather. The power of good luck. And I'm like, the fuck? This is the Colombian X-Men. Yeah, yeah. Right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, they, get, they even got a house and they got a I, Professor I, X. I know. <laughs> All they needed was a jet. <laughs> a Professor X. <Eke>? You know? <laughs> man, this is the Colombian X-Men home for the uh, weird and the talented and the uh, gifted right here. One woman just got a cloud that follows her everywhere <laughs> she goes. She's like a, it's like a up storm. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> I mean, she's literally storm. She, she creates like, storms that they only affect her. <laughs> yeah, somebody said, La Prof- Professor Sore Eke. <laughs> Yeah, man, they might as well put them in Eke suits. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy, man. Uh, uh, unless you're Marabella, then. Oh, what's her name? Like, it, damn, uh, it, yes, it, it's, Mar- it's the Marabella Marabella. Mar- I yeah, except for her. Yeah. You know, she's the only one running around with her plain, ordinary ass. But everybody else, everybody else, is, they know what? They might as well be the X-Men because when you get down to it, everybody else they do have like these really kind of badass powers, man. And of course, Disney introduces you to these powers through the power of song. Well, there you go. That's her power. <laughs> power and keep bothering the. <laughs> the power of song. Yeah, it just seemed like you know, song and knowing about everybody was her thing. Yeah. Uh, not that anyone appreciated it, <laughs> oh, even no. a little bit. No, man. You know what? And that's what I actually appreciate about this movie, man. I, I, I like that I didn't know what was happening at first. I like that I didn't, I wasn't picking up on anything, and I just had to kind of just go along with it. It was cool because, you know, this is uh this is something where I felt like I was able to just let myself go. You know, it was so weird that I didn't know what was going to happen next. And I like that. And I do emphasize that word weird. Not magical or peculiar. No, it was weird, man. Because these people just start popping up with these these things with no explanation. Yeah. Of course, if these are the Colombian X-Men, I was waiting on, well, where's Colombian Magneto? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to ask. And the thing is, he or no other X-Men villain ever showed up. This is... This is uh, this is breaking formula. I mean, it's not anything that this has that has not been done before. They, you know, they've done this a few times, but there's no, there's no big villain in this. You know, the the attackers from the village before they don't show back up. You know, you never hear about what happens to them. Nah, no, this I, is. I don't think they came to a good end. No, 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 nah, man. It was this. What we have here is taking a page from Pixar's book of let's make more internal struggles. With these people, you know, uh, this is more about family, which I'll get into in a little bit. You know, I guess when you talk about it, there is kind of a villain. It would be a stretch, but I will say, there's someone here that was—they were pissing me off. Sure, <laughs> they were making me mad, and they were meant to. And if you want to pin them as being a villain, then fine, you can. It's, it is something where you might have to stretch a little bit, but you know, even that is something. It's not villainous. It's more sad. Yeah, it is, but. Their actions also were kind of like, you've been extra here. This is kind of, this is really unnecessary. It really that, is. There's a much better way to handle this than what you're doing. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> they, no, they, to me, hell yeah, they were a villain. Uh-huh. Leave, leave people alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's, hey, everybody has that villain in their family somewhere. Mm-hmm. Somebody who just can't just let, can't let people live. Yeah, just, just please, just back off. Just, yeah, live and let live. Just always on people's back. Mm-hmm. Always do better. Yeah. You married yet? <laughs> I don't like that girl you with. <laughs> well, you got a job yet? How come you ain't going to school? You know, somebody always up and I ain't going to say nothing, but yeah, yeah. if you. Is if nobody going to defend me? <laughs> <laughs> and you with your sorry ass. <laughs> what, what, I, know, I, I know we're related, but I have to ask why are you still here? <laughs> that poor That's, girl. That seemed to be the question throughout the movie. That poor girl, and I'm gonna, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Mar- Stephanie Beatrice plays uh, is the voice of uh, Maribel here, who, as I said, in the family, she's a she's a teenage girl, and she's the only one who doesn't have any 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 uh, any any powers. Where everybody else has gotten one, and some people are cool with that, and then some people are like, "Well, damn, ain't you a disappointment?" And that really pulled me in with that story right there. But I'll get into that in a little bit. Martin, how'd you feel about this? Yeah, well, it seemed like some people were like, "Yeah, you were a real disappointment," and and they were never shy shy away from rubbing it in her face. But the others just seemed to not be. I don't know. They it was like they were ambivalent about it, but they 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 weren't going back. They weren't going to have her back. It was like, oh no. It was like it was almost like going like, "Well, I got my power, so." I don't know. Yeah, you, you, you sucks to that. be you. Yeah, sucks to be you. Yeah, uh, 
No, no, you're right. You're right. It is it, it is an internal struggle. There is no real villain they have to, you know, spar off against. It's just things going on. Um it's a it's a beautiful movie. You know, between the 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 village, the forest, the house, the this this house is magical in that it can do everything for you. Um, you know, you think you got it made with your with your nest and your and your <laughs> and your echo and and calling out commands, but this this house does things before you even tell it. Bitch, to. you ain't got magic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is that. Uh, one of the the really cool things about this uh, is that it shows Latin culture, especially you know Colombian. Where you have like a, a big criticism that came up with In the Heights is mm-hmm. with colorism, where it's like, oh, it's all light skinned Latino people. Here it shows it how it is, where you have people of, of so many different shades that some may look white and some look black, almost African, and that's that's accurate. Uh, and it's it's good to to see that interplay with everyone in the family. Yeah, th- you know, people. That's one thing I was going to talk about, and I'll get to that in a little bit because. I tell you, I'm going to get back on this family thing right here because the lack of a main villain here is making this more intimate and personal. When I say personal, it's because we can relate to this right here, if, especially if you have a big family. Now, if you're only child in a small family, maybe this is something where you're not relating to it as much. But you know people like this. At least you've seen people like this on TV. You know, this makes the fantastic more relatable because it centers on family problems that all of us can we've experienced and can relate to on some level you know the, and these issues are dividing the family it's one of those things where everybody looks at you from the outside and they think oh your family's so cool your family's so awesome man the whole community loves your family when you get right down to it that family's being torn apart from the inside out and that's what's happening here they got a character and everybody knows about this character because you got this character probably in your life everybody got that uncle or that cousin who ain't right <laughs> and don't nobody tell him about family functions, reunions. Mm. When you leave the house, your mama told you, hey, if if Uncle Jimmy come by, don't answer the door. <laughs> and don't let him in the house. Don't let him in the house. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm here, don't tell him I'm not here. You know, everybody got that uncle, that cousin like that. You know, everybody got that grandmother that's, that they're scared of. And the whole family's scared to, yeah, <laughs> yeah, scared to yeah. say something, too. But also... You know, some of you might experience this yourself. It's that fear and that experience of not living up to the family standard. Here, the, the metaphorical explanation for that is magic, you know. But, look, I was that kid. You know, I was that, I was the, what the hell is wrong with that kid, kid. <laughs> you know, I know what that was like. Why are, you always, why are you always crying and drawing and shit? How come you ain't playing no sports? <laughs> Anything like that. So, mm-hmm. I, so Maribel, I can, I can relate to with that. Yeah. You know, the uh, when everybody's looking at her and like saying, okay, you're the late bloomer here. What's going on? So, you know, all these things that happened in this 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 movie right here, I felt like this is cool. You know, we let's just concentrate on these people because we don't need no villain. Man, their problems are big enough as it is. Mm. And I really I really like that, man. And also I like that it never be you got these problems, but it's still a Disney animated family film, and they could make it real sappy. We could get very melodramatic with what's going on here. But they don't. You know, it's never sappy, despite some of the heartbreaking moments that are in here. And I really love that uh, Marabella has no pro- has no powers. You know, I, I really like that character, man, because, you know, people, man, people are, they show people in here, even old family members, like, girl, you hear Marabella ain't got no powers yet. You know, yeah. what's wrong with her? Oh, man, hey, man, how you doing? You know, people are... Yeah, oh, your cousin's about to get his powers, but you know what? Maybe you shouldn't be here because you, you being around might make him not get his powers. They actually tell this girl, <laughs> you know how you can help? Just go away. <laughs> <laughs> go! <laughs> just get, man, they treat her... They treat her like dirt, man, but we never get to, like, Cinderella level right, right here, man. She, you know... I love this character because she just takes it all in stride. She's like, all right, but still got y'all's back, man. I'll be over here if y'all need me. <laughs> and it's cool, man, you know, and it really it really makes you feel for her without having to make any kind of real melodramatic scenes of crying. You know, her running away. Mar- Marabella, come back. Come back. You know, yeah, all that. Yeah, no, they yeah. don't do that. Right. She goes away. And she and when she goes, she figures out there's something wrong with the house, and of course no one wants to listen to her. 
And all of this could be something where they're just playing this up. And they don't, man. They don't. And for the most part, they may, they're able to find the right level of sadness, the right level of heartbreak, and keep it going. Keep it still kind of festive. Keep the humor and the comedy going mm-hmm. on. I really appreciated that with, with this, man. You know, they, they didn't want to bring anybody down. This is still supposed to be something that is, it's, it wants to send you out with a positive feeling. And it did that with me. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, I, 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 I hear everything you're saying. And maybe because I don't come from a big family, but I just never really connected with this that, that much. Um, I, I looked at it. It was beautiful. And, I was, and the stuff you said about uh, Marabella, I, I, you know, I, liked, I, I liked all that. But at the same time, it was always singing, and yeah, I uh, it, so much of it felt kind of made up on the spot. Uh, maybe there's just that, at least for me, that tipping point with uh, Lin Manuel Miranda, because I was like, you know, I'm really starting to see the pattern of how he, you know, writes these songs, and huh? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a couple in here, especially the opening, and 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 two or three of them. That I really liked, but this, some of them I was like, "Yeah, it just feels like more the the same thing um, from all of his other movies." Yeah, I, I I wish I loved this the way everybody else does, but it, it just you know it was it was nice, but it just wasn't working that well for me. I get what you're saying with the songs and whatnot, and maybe Lin Manuel Miranda just hitting that point where he's everywhere now because he he really is doing a lot. You know, he's he's putting out one or two, three projects every year, so it is something where I can see if you're getting you know. Manueled out. Well, yeah, it's just that, like, at, at that point when you know you're uh, Neo at the end of the Matrix, where you can see the the ones and the zeros and how everything is made. It's like, okay, it's kind of not that special. And you know, I liked it better this time or that other time. Yeah, yeah, man. No, I, I really did like this. Like I said, I I, I guess I felt for uh, I, I felt a lot for them. For me, I. I don't care about all the rules of the world. Like I said, I kind of like that if they set it up in a way where that's not the center of the story. You know, it's not it's not the attention of the story. I can deal with that. You know, we're dropped into this world, and you know, maybe we'll find out about it later. Maybe we won't. Right now, we're concentrating on these people, and the, I felt enough of a story there with uh, uh, Marabella mm-hmm. to be like, all right, I'm just invested in this. I really did feel bad for her, man. Because she, cause I, she, I did too. Like when she's going around trying to tell people, y'all don't understand, y'all's world is about to come crashing down. Yeah, and, and, and a gaslighting her. And everybody's like, yeah, who, you know, you powerless bitch. Anything for attention. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Any, wow. Now you're just making up stuff. That is low, Marabella, low. <laughs> no, but. Lisa, if you know what's hurting the magic and it gets worse because you won't tell me what's wrong. Nothing's wrong! Wow, uh, sorry, that, uh, that snuck out. I like the way this dog go here. She lying. <laughs> <laughs> she full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said Louisa can get it. Man, Louisa was, <laughs> she's big and she was fine as hell, too. <laughs> she had, like, some Colombian She-Hulk thing going yeah, on. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she yeah. was dead. Thick <laughs> is what y'all like to say. <laughs> Louisa, Louisa was fine as hell. Y'all have... <laughs> This Louise is the kind of girl, y'all have fantasies about her like pinning you down uh. and not letting your ass up for a while. <laughs> no, man. No, it's a. I, and I showed that clip too because I always thought that they were doing some really cool bits of comic business going on throughout, man. I was always giggling and laughing at the little things they do. Now, I will tell you what I don't like, and it's not much, but talk about songs, sir. I heard you mention song, Martin. I did say I said something about songs. You mentioned something about songs there. I like the songs in this, but there's a there's certain musical numbers that I don't like in any Disney movie, and it's just me. There's nothing wrong with them, but a lot of these musical numbers here, they're weaving and dancing through the family. They're introducing characters. It's part of the story. Now, there's a thing that musical animated movies do, and Disney kind of has created this, but a lot of people do this. You'll always have, in these kind of movies, where there's a lot of music for families, and they're animated, the animated set piece, mm-hmm. where it's a song where it ain't got, it's, it's about the story, but it's all with wacky, whimsical visuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just for the animators to yeah. have a good time and show, damn, we animating, ain't we? <laughs> you know, you know? <laughs> Man, we animating the shit out of this. 
like like you know that the uh, Louisa song. I, I, I knew that was going to be, and that was, and, and the thing is, I that was one of the songs I liked the most. But you are right about that. I like the song. Yes, I just it was just it, one. It was, it was a departure from everything that was going on. It's like yeah, yeah you pretty much said what this was about before we even got to the song. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, really, Cerberus the dog. What's that got to do with with Columbia? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. I mean, I don't know. Maybe she just did cocaine or something. Just, <laughs> she's tripping the f out on the, the one who kind of brought me in from like liking this a lot to just loving this mm -hmm. was John Leguizamo, man. Oh, yeah, he was good. Who plays Bruno, which Bruno's that cousin that ain't right. We don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> hey, Bruno, come to the door. Don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the way they were talking about Bruno, you would think he was going to be like the pest, and he wasn't at all. No, <laughs> and it really was cool because it just... It just drove home more how messed up this family is, yeah. man. And I love that. I love that this, this family's dancing around, and as you say, it's so lush and musical. Meanwhile, this man's hiding in an attic somewhere. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Ostracized. I mean, I, he and John Leguizamo was really good. He was really good. He's not doing. He's not doing that rat or that no. that thing from Ice Age or anything like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. Sid the sloth. Sid the sloth. He's not doing anything like that. He's pretty much doing like a low key voice for this character. Mm -hmm. And Bruno, I thought, was a great character. He man, was a great character. Lynn manuel Miranda. And you were right. You said it, Martin. That fool learned from In the Heights. He, 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 if somebody told you, you, you better put some blackness up in here. Not brownness. No, huh, you, better uh, put, but, you better put some black, com, complete with afros and everything. Yeah. I want to see some nappy hair up uh -huh. in here. <laughs> Biracial kids and everything, yeah. man. Yeah, I thought that, I thought that, that was kind of cool. It's that very you, cool. You went from... Anywhere from uh, European Latin that's white like to Africa black, mm -hmm. and that was brilliant. I thought that that was cool, man. I love seeing that. Uh, the Bruno song, by the way, also talking about songs I don't like. I love that Bruno song. Yeah, that was, was probably my favorite one. We don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. Shit, Bruno here. <laughs> Fuck Bruno. <laughs> Art direction, needless to say, is 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 uh is good. We talked about that already. You know, I couldn't, I got nothing to follow up with that where you said that this is lush right here. There's, but there are so many scenes, man, where they just, the colors, they just know how to coordinate colors in here mm. so well. I want to eat this movie, man. <laughs> the, the, the girl who, I'm sure you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the, I love the scenes with the girl who just shit flowers. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they, they went off on those. You could tell that that was their favorite thing to do. Yeah. I like these directors a lot, man. Oh, these are the same guys that did Zootopia and Moana. Yeah, I, uh, I yeah, I, it definitely like had a feel of Moana. Jared Bush and uh, Brian Howard. Damn, look like they had a little bit of that Colombian right, right? now. <laughs> <laughs> Colombia's well, finest. Well, we had to go sample to get it authentic. <laughs> 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 Where well, you think all those colors come from, huh? <laughs> think we just do that shit naturally? <laughs> And that's the woman that they brought in to do this with them, uh, Carice Castro Smith, man. And of course, Lynn Manuel Miranda came in to the, add to the story and, of course, contribute the songs here. And I think you got a point, man. I, I can understand people saying, "All right, I'm tired of seeing this dude." Well, it's not even my me being tired because I, you know, I was like, "Hey, I'm praising more than anybody else," but I was like, "He's just starting to sound alike." You know, the Disney design is always, the characters, they're always the same, but I love everything else around it. You know, the Disney, the character design, that's their thing. That's not going to change. But I thought they went all out with everything else. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful looking movie. It's, it's fun. Um, most of the songs are, are really good. If somebody likes it, I mean, I think it's a very likable movie. Yeah. I can only speak for myself that I was kind of let down. It was, uh, you know, it, it didn't have, you know, any low lows, but I didn't get the high highs I normally get. And I'd rather watch a movie that's imperfect that still gives me that, that oomph than one that I just go through not really feeling it. So it's kind of a, a low matinee for me. You know, it's uh, like I said, no memorable villains or princesses here, but that's something I appreciate that made it more relatable to me and more intimate. And I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, but then again, I'm kind of partial to breaking from formula like that. That's why I love when Pixar does that. That's why uh, Inside Out is one of my favorite movies. Sure. So it's just a personal appealing to me. So yeah, I, I give this a, a full price. I, I like this a lot. Simplicity sometimes is better for me in a movie. I don't need this to, all, I don't need Disney to always make these big productions, man. Just give me something nice, give me something simple. Give me something colorful to make me smile, and I'm good. You know, that's how I was with Luca. 
where I was like, this is simple, but I just absolutely love it. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. Didn't help that I actually, or maybe it did help. I did a little Columbia when I went to see this movie. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Colors, man. Yeah, Colors. see, Alamo Draft House needs to have one of those nights. Come see Encanto and get a little nose candy. Yeah. <laughs> Put that on the menu. Yeah. Everybody do a bump. Yeah. Whatever they sing. Uh, sugar night. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone, support our Patreon, which helps us to continue bringing you our live streams, videos, and podcasts while bringing you new content such as exclusive live streams and animated shorts. 